In this first video, we are going to be making coaster holders and, and a little bit of coasters. The coasters, to be honest, the coasters were already made and they were made uh, without me thinking that I should do a video. So this first one, uh, the coasters are made, we'll finish them up, but then we're gonna make uh, a lot of mistakes making a coaster holder for said coasters. Um, so yeah, so this is a little backwards. This is a little, um, I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, I mean, I do know some things, but I'm learning through it all and, and the video portion, I don't know why I have this <laughs> piece of walnut. Uh, the video portion is the new portion, the new, new thing. So stick around as we um, learn some valuable lessons and make some coaster holders and finish some coasters. Cue, I'd say cue music or outro, but I got nothing. So we begin by looking through scraps and finding some nice walnut that may or may not be flush. And we go to the joiner. But clearly before we can join said wood, we clean up because after 44 years of existence, Kelly doesn't know how to clean up after himself. Today. Okay. In a small shop, you have limited space, so you do what you can. So then we promptly run said walnut across the planer, get a nice smooth, smooth edge. And a nice little trick is take a pencil and you know, scribble, 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 scribble all over the place. Stay within the lines. And uh, you then run that back over the planer and uh, you take a look. And if you don't see any scribble marks left, then you're flush. So after promptly hydrating and blowing sawdust, again, I never really clean up, and uh, then you make sure none of that sawdust is in your drink. And if it is, it's chewy sawdust. <laughs> Look what I can do. Okay, enough, enough of that. Uh, we check out the sizes, and we make sure it's going to fit, and then we grab a couple clamps because it's time to glue up and clamps are necessary for glue up. So when you are joining wood via glue, it is important to have plenty of glue. You will have squeeze out and uh, don't mind me. And so be ready for cleanup before and after, which is why this silicone mat that I have works well as the glue can be just peeled off quite easily. So apply a good bead of glue, that should do it. And then you clamp and clamp and clamp some more. And then you set it to nighty night for about 24 hours. You can go less than that, but 24 hours really gives it a nice amount of time for that glue to set. Now as that glue sets, one thing that's handy is to make a template for repetitive use. So if you're planning on doing this more often than once, might as well make it easier on yourself and give yourself a jig or something else. And so at this point, I am wanting to do um, a jig that I can consistently use. And so you figure out your size, you figure out your length and uh, make it easier on yourself. So as you figure it out, what you'll want to also take into consideration is how many coasters you're wanting to hold and where they're going to fit. So in this case, I'm looking at holding them at an angle. And so it won't be flush, straight, whatever the word is. Words are hard. And uh, figuring just the best way aesthetically and functionally that this will work. And so you measure and then you look and then you measure and then you forget the number you had and then you measure on another side and you continue to forget again and then at some point you just start from the beginning as if you never measured anything so 
So once you have what you want, take some scrap plywood here. This is a nice quarter inch and I'm making a, a jig that I can use. But I do want it to be a little bit thicker than just this quarter inch. So I'm using this cross cut sled and we'll thicken it up before drilling a hole in it that will then become the pilot hole for the dowels and marking on the coaster holder. So after making a few cuts, you come back and you figure out what's going to work or not. In this case, I made three and I think I ended up just using the two. And so what you see in front of me there is some CA glue and some accelerator spray. CA glue was just simply super glue and the accelerator does exactly as it says as it accelerates it so you put the ca glue on one side and then you spray the other side with the accelerator and what is already super fast glue becomes super faster because you know we need to make things even faster than fast because i don't want to wait 20 seconds i can only wait four three two one and it's done once I've figured out where exactly I want the pilot holes to go, I am drilling this into the jig and that'll be for every corner. I can just move the jig around and make sure that they're all in the same spot. And <laughs> look what I made. I have longer arms. I can get this and this. <sighs> yeah, life is easy when you have longer arms. Stop fooling around, Kelly. You got work to do. Come here. So now that we have those jigs made, we need to figure out how tall the dowels need to be. And so shove it in there, make sure it's flush, and put the coasters up to the height, then proceed to cut them to size. And since we're making two coaster holders, four on each side, we have eight. One thing that I like is cork on the bottom and not having any hair allows you to strategically place reusable tape on said noggin. So this here is cork and we're going to put those on each coaster. It's got a uh, taped backing and so we cut and cut and cut some more and cut some more to a rough size and then peel off that backing and slap it on the pretty side of the coaster. And then after that, one down, nine to go. So then once that's done, you can cut some more as then you gotta cut it to size. And then after doing that to 10 of them, you get to do a lacquer. This is a spray clear glossy lacquer that'll protect the coasters. And then once that's done, you get to do it again and again and again. But between those agains, we get to sand. It's fun. Sanding is fun. And here in this case, we have the coaster holder dry. And so run it through the planer and then the joiner, or the joiner, then the planer. Get it right, Kelly. To get it flush and flat. And then I realized it's too small and it's slightly boring. So let's add a little bit of curly maple to this. So we glue up yet again with lots of clamps and we wait and wait and wait. Finally, we can undo it and decide that we still don't like it. Or in this case, after all these clamps and then having to go over to the planer. Yeah, don't forget that Kelly we need to make a big mistake. So here I have the sled again and I have the size that I want the coaster holder to be. And so I'm just setting it up to cut this 
perfectly in half to where I have two perfect coasters holders and then I run it through the saw and what you're left with is one perfect coaster holder and one that is too small way to go Kelly uh, Hulk angry so now what do you do you stare at the other scrap pile and then you grab some curly maple, some walnut, and wee, 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 join them together. But then you decide, I don't like that idea. So you stare at your scrap pile again, maybe getting inspired. Grab a bunch of other things, because clearly you're just going to make more mistakes. You look at what you've done in the past. Can you use those? No. You look at your other scrap pile, and you waste time. This is why it takes me so long to get things done. So then you grab something that you've already done before that's just sitting there and you see if you can squeeze those together. Mm. Eh, let's see what happens. <laughs> Hi. So if you watch closely, right about there. Yeah. Nice job, Kelly. You broke it. We had cut the wood into the appropriate sizes and then drilling the holes and I'd gotten two out of the four done there and then it broke. So what do you do? I can fix it. I can fix it. You try to see if you can clean up the end and then you realize no it's broken. Grr. Can I use this? No we've already tried that. So then you stare at your scrap pile again. And now we're just going to try a block of curly maple. But we've learned some lessons. We're going to go about this a little bit different way. We're going to start off this big thick piece by just drilling four holes through a thicker piece. And then we'll resaw it to the bandsaw. Yeah. Clearly I'm still bitter. stick that there that's what one thing beards are good for now we're going to lose that pencil so now i have cut it to size over at the saw oh, don't forget that and now we are going to cut it in half and i did and then i ran it through the planer and it chipped Let's start again. Get a little walnut, get a little curly maple, throw this here and here and squeeze it all together. And then you stare at it while you eat jerky. And you all cut it to the same size, long enough for the two, grab some glue, and we start this yet again. Don't forget the clamps. So after you're glued, after it's done all that stuff, we now can put the holes in and then test it with the dowels. And those are going in well, but Kelly, take a look at what you're doing. They aren't straight, but as I learned at a very young age, if it's not straight, just whack it harder. Mm, whack it harder. You know you want to hit it harder. There you go. At an angle. At a kid. Hit it harder. And then you take a look at it and you realize, oh no, it's still not going to work and you can't fix it. So then you don't, don't hit yourself in the head, kids. It's not wise. So now we start all over. And in this case, what if we just do a hole in the middle? Okay, so I realize I am doing a lot of this backwards. <laughs> this is the first video recording of me doing any work. And uh, um, so I'm coming to you to talk about what I've done when I'm nearly done. So this video um, has been a process of 
uh, success and failures um, as I make these um, uh, coaster and holders. The coasters were already done, and so some of the video was really me just putting the backing um, and then sanding and spraying it, but I had already glued up and done all this, uh, and then it was after the fact and I realized I should do a video because um, that's part of this sawdust and scriptures. Um, so, backwards, it's, we're getting there. Uh, so this video may seem like a hot mess of things, but um, I'm hoping in the end it all kind of just makes sense. And again, this is a journey. Um, I've made coasters a, a few times. Um, that's actually a lie, one other time. <laughs> I made it once um, and it worked well. I don't know why I'm struggling now. And, the coasters I made before are way harder than just this. Um, this actually was fine. You'd think this would be the more complicated one, but it's, it's actually the, the holder that I'm really having difficulty with. And I think maybe part of it is because the first coasters were for us. They were some leftover scraps, and, um, and I was just trying to figure out what to do with them. And so I said, let me make some coasters. And I've learned a couple things, and uh, they aren't perfect. They look cool, their function could be better, they're not quite wide enough. Um, this one is much better. Um, and the, the holders were simple and easy and it worked great and so I don't know why this time around <laughs> it's that much more difficult. But I've learned some valuable tricks uh, for the next round and that's definitely what I'm going to be trying to, to share throughout this process. Um, so um, we'll be finishing this up and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, um, I'm not sure where this video is going to be inserted at some point. So we'll see what it is. So now we get back to a glued piece of wood. Attempt, I don't even know where we're at. This is like 30. And you scrape all the glue off. And then once that's done, you run it through the joiner and the planer. And then you start to figure out where you want the coasters to be. And you mark out those holes. You do a little cut cut and a whole hole. Uh, in this case, those holes will be drilled over at the drill press, but let's just mark them first. Okay, so here's, here's what I learned. I just cut this using, uh, or just drilled this using my, um, my uh, drill press, that's what it is. Um, and it worked a lot better. It worked really well the other, uh, when I was doing the other thing or one of my failed attempts, um, but it was on this little guy. And I, and I was thinking about using this for the coasters, but I, I just didn't like doing that to someone else's coasters. Uh, maybe to mine, but not to this one. Um, so drill press, definitely cleaner, because the other issue I had when I did it by hand, even though the very first one I did, I did it by hand, I got nice and straight. This other time I did not. Uh, drill press comes in straight. Um, it also, I can go at a slower pace, more controlled pace, um, and thus this, the split out is, is minimal. Um, and uh, now I can go and I can cut this to size, because I have all this extra space. I can cut this to size, and uh, when I was drilling it, I had all this extra space around it to a, a, avoid the breaks, and I'll talk about my failures and learned lessons uh, at the end. So this worked. Time to cut it on, um, probably I'm gonna cut it on the, uh, the compound, <laughs> the miter saw. Um, I could do it on the table saw. That word came to me easily. Um, but I think I'm just gonna do it over there and then sand it, glue it, um, or dowel it, glue it, and uh, check this off as some fantastic lessons. So let's, uh, let's head over to the table saw. No, miter saw. Someday I'll actually learn what my equipment is called and remember it. So in this case, we are adding some glue. We're gonna put those dowels in. We're gonna smack it a few times, because again, hitting things with the hammer helps. And we notice everything is 
straight and narrow and good and after sanding it we wipe it down and we spray it with that clear gloss lacquer these now are going to dry i've hit them with polyurethane um, i'll do two to three coats of this sand in between uh, very light with some 800 grit um, just to get down the rough spots um, and then those will be ready for the customer. Uh, it's the same gloss that I used for these as I did earlier. Listen, this was, uh, this was a struggle to get to, to, to this. Um, <laughs> through, through all the pains, I, 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 we did, did this one. Um, and this one actually turned out okay. Uh, the problem is, is it, it cracked, it chipped. Um, as you can see here, it actually split and fractured. Um, this one, I was hoping was gonna be well, cause this one turned out well. And uh, you can see here, it chipped, it broke. Now I expect things to fracture uh, when you're doing different glue ups, it fractured right there as well. Um, different woods and it's gonna find the least path of resistance when it when there is a break and so one of the lessons i learned in this is to cut out a bigger piece drill the holes and then trim it down so that's one of the many lessons i've learned um the other issue as you can see here that ain't straight <laughs> that ain't up and down um none of them are this is just atrocious um and of course i glued it in because why wouldn't i have done that so not only did it break but um a break I can deal with, but it was just, I can't fix that. I can't fix <laughs> that. Uh, so another lesson, uh, I use the drill press. That comes down straight, me pushing down, it's not gonna be straight. Um, no matter how straight I think I am. They have, they have little presses for a drill itself, your, your DeWalt or whatever you have. I don't have one of those, I actually have a drill press as you've seen. So moving to the drill, drill press helped out. I think a lot for the fracturing as well and the breaking um, by going to the drill press, I can go slower. I can take my time. Uh, so that's uh, a huge benefit as well. So I'll be doing that from the future. Um, and then there's things that you can't control. So I thought I was doing well with these two, uh, curly maple, except when I ran it through the planer, um, chipped out, shattered, broke all over it. And that all over the place. And that's part of the problem with, um, soft, uh, curly maple. Um, go with the harder maple, um, but I love the look of the curly maple. Um, you just gotta be ready for those chips and breaks and, and issues. And um, this was another option. Um, I'm not completely against this option. I just didn't wanna drill into their, to their uh, coaster and have a hole, because this could work very easily. Slide it down, you, down, you can have all these stacked together, um, tape it, and then Wherever you have this placed, you can place this on as well. I think it would work beautiful. Um, that may be an option I do in the future. Um, I just didn't want to do this for someone else. Um, lots of amazing lessons were learned. Thankfully, we got there. Um, you know, some of the lessons don't give up. <laughs> Keep trying. Uh, failure isn't failure. Failure is only when you stop learning and you stop growing and you, and you just don't do it anymore. Um, and so uh, it was a, a nice learning process with a lot, of, a lot of mistakes, but it is what it is. And, you know, we move forward. Um, as I think about the scripture part of the sawdust and scriptures, um, I wanted to incorporate some, some type of scripture, whether it's implied or not. And as I was thinking about this, um, what instantly first and foremost came to mind um, for these coasters is where, where does Jesus drink? And, and clearly he drinks at the table. He shares the cup. And the cup is wine, the cup is always wine, right? And he speaks of the cup of, of his blood of his covenant. But even before that, the first miracle that Jesus does is the wedding feast. And so John 2, 1 through 11 has Jesus at the wedding feast and his mom comes to him saying, we, we ran out of wine. And, and while that didn't speak to me, what spoke to me was Jesus was a carpenter. Now we could have a conversation about what kind of carpenter was he? Did they have the wood? Was he a wood carpenter? Most likely he wasn't. It probably would have been some stone of some, of some sort, but Jesus was a carpenter. And so for our context, a carpenter, I, I envision him making tables and chairs and, and all these beautiful things. Um, and at the feast, people would have had a drink. This isn't a drink, but a drink. 
And what do you not do? You don't put the drink on a beautiful table unless you put rings on it. So Jesus, being the carpenter, you know he doesn't want rings on his table. So what would he have done for that chalice, that, that wine goblet or wine cup or that pitcher? The brother would have made some drink holders and a, coat and, and a holder for those drink holders. So that's your scripture, John 2, 1 through 11, in some way or another. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, this learning process as well. And uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, you can hit the like button if you want. I don't do this for the likes. I do this because I enjoy it and might as well share my failings and my adventures with other people. Um, you can share this in other ways and, and social media um, if you'd like. But uh, thanks for hanging out. Take care. God bless. Be kind. Be considerate. Be compassionate towards one another. Be full of love and grace and mercy. We'll see you again, hopefully with less failures. Not failures. Lessons learned. Mm. Lessons learned. <laughs>